the book of Revelation, chapter 13. I promised uh, last week that I was going to be uh, bringing you this special message today, and that's what I'd like to do. Revelation chapter number 13. Take your Bible there. Revelation means reveal, the unveiling. And so this talks about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and all the stuff that happens before. What I'm going to read to you this morning is in the tribulation. Everything from Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 on has never happened yet. We are here looking in Revelation chapter 13. I'm going to talk about a one world government. I'm going to preach this morning about globalism, CERN, and the RFID chip to show you where we are on the calendar of God. If you want to know where we're at, I'm going to show you this morning. We are quickly moving toward a one world government, a one world monetary system, a one world religion, and a one world government. That is exactly what's going to happen. Look at Revelation chapter 13 and look at verse number three. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. Now we'll talk about that some other time about the, the Antichrist during the tribulation uh, counterfeiting the resurrection of Jesus. And all the world, see that? I'm talking about one world government. All the world wondered after the beast. Verse four, and they worshiped the dragon. You understand in the Revelation 13 who the dragon is? The devil. People say, oh, nobody really has devil worship. The Bible said the whole world there worship the dragon. They'll worship the devil. A lot of people worship the devil and don't even know it's a devil. The biggest trick the devil can pull on you is to make you think he ain't real. That's the biggest trick he's got. If he can get you to thinking it's all fake and fun, fairy tale, he's got you right where he wants you. It is real. Now, look at verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do uh, in the sight of them. Now hold your place there just a second. The devil in the tribulation has power to work great miracles. So when people see that, they're gonna say, oh my goodness, that has to be God. That's, that's the real Jesus. And it's not the real Jesus. Jesus said, I've come in my, own, uh, my Father's name and you receive me not. When another comes in his own name, you're gonna receive him. They'll swallow it up, hook, line, and sinker. What I'm gonna tell you this morning is the world is ripe, ripe right now. And there's only one thing stopping the Antichrist from stepping out on the scene right now, and that's the restrainer is still here restraining him, holding him back. Now, we'll talk about that in a minute. Look here at verse number 13, uh, uh, verse, verse 15, I'm sorry. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak. See that? He'll have power to do that and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Verse 16, here's your one world government and monetary system. And he causeth all, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand. Not on, in. People you say, they're gonna put that mark of the beast on you. No, they're gonna put it in you. In your right hand or in your forehead. And, and they receive a mark in the right hand and that no man, 17, might buy or sell save that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his, his, his number is 600, three score and six. That's 666. Now, let me talk just a minute about globalism. What is a globalist? You hear it on the news all the time. Somebody's a globalist. Somebody, somebody's not. I'm not politicking. The devil makes you divide up into political groups to confuse you of what, the, what he's really doing. A globalist is a person uh, that you hear them talk about the elite that make the decisions that run the world. There are some. I'm gonna name you a few of them. The Rothschilds. Jacob Rothschild, 
uh, Nathan, Baron, Benjamin. These are the Rothschilds. Unbelievably rich and powerful families. We'll study on them sometime. There were uh, David Rockefeller, Henry Kissinger, none other than George Soros. You hear so much about today. Now, all those people came up out of the Honduras and Mexico and stuff, coming to American borders, and they traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles saying, we want in America. Do you think them people could afford that? Who fed them? Who paid for their food? And other, all them weeks that they were traveling, it's carefully plotted and planned. One worlders are paying for that to try to mix everybody together. Let me tell you, the time that I'm talking about this morning in the Bible is called Jacob's Trouble. That's Israel. Uh, it's called the Great Tribulation. It's called Daniel's 70th week in Bible prophecy. There's 70 weeks of Daniel. 69 of them have already happened. This is the 70th one that I'm reading about this morning. A globalist is somebody who advocates the operation or planning of the econ economic and foreign policy on a global basis. What does that mean? Erase the borders. Everybody's together. We are the world, you know, like that. All that whole spirit comes together and saying, let's just make one big group of people humankind. That sounds good, but it is not right and it will never work. They believe that all nations and borders should be wiped out and absolved, and they believe in corporate, academic, political, and religious barriers dropped, mix everybody into one big group. Now, it's simple if you, if you think about this. If you ask all the world leaders what's the biggest problem in the world, what would they say? War. We got to stop wars. Well, what starts wars? Differences. People don't like each other. They don't agree on stuff, so they fight. So if we're going to stop wars, what do we do? Get rid of differences. Does that make sense? That's what that's their thinking. That's what they're thinking. So you, you make the rich poor. You make the poor rich. You take, uh, you take the money from the man that's got a lot of money and give it to the man that don't have no money and raise them up and put them together. That sounds good, but it never has worked and never will. That's communism. That's socialism. That's what Bernie and Hillary and people like that believe. They believe in socialism. Uh, take it away from everybody but them and, 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 and give it to people that don't have anything. Now, and I'm going to tell you something this morning. This is not in the message, but I just want to give you a little lesson. If you took 10 men up here this morning, let them have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You put 10 men on this stage, and I give every one of them $100. And I left and come back in two years. In two years' time, this one would have 400, that one would have 200, that one would have 300, that one would have 50, that one would have 20, and the last two or three wouldn't have none. That's just the way the world goes because of our sinful nature. You're never gonna do that. It will not work. It never has worked. It never will work. Um, so what you do, what you do is you erase the differences. You make the boys like girls. You make the girls like boys. You make, um, you, tell, you tell all the women through the talk shows that they're oppressed and family life is terrible and you teach them to hate men. You preach that on TV all the time. All women should hate men because they're all sexist pigs who don't care anything about them. Men, more feminine, and women, more masculine. No civilization has ever survived that kind of philosophy of erasing all the differences. You know what environmentalism is? All the talk about the environment and we're awful for not saving the environment and how we should save the environment. You know what that is? I'll tell you what it is. Uh, they talk about overpopulation and no food is to make you feel guilty for having anything to start with and to bring in a one world government. When Al Gore quits flying around in a private jet, we might cut back on our gas a little bit. The only thing I can't stand is people won't practice what they preach, amen. Uh, but they, are, uh, they, are, uh, they make trade agreements to undermine our national uh, sovereignty. And all nations should be sovereign. We don't have the right to tell another nation what to do. They're sovereign in themselves. Another nation don't tell the other nation what to do. That's quickly eroding and disappearing out from under us. The only group you can criticize without being attacked 
is Bible-believing Christians. That's the truth. Uh, now, let me say something about globalism and a one-world government. Are you listening? God is against a one-world government where he is not in charge. I can prove it. In Genesis chapter 11, they all got together and they said, let's all get together. We're gonna build us a tower that's gonna reach to heaven. We're gonna do this. Read it when you go home. Genesis chapter 11. That was a one world movement and we're gonna reach up to heaven and make it on our own. We don't need God. And brother, the Lord come down and destroyed that thing and was against the city and that's when he busted up their languages and spread them out. Did you realize that God never intended for people to live in all these big cities to start with? Do you realize that, right? Right? The Lord's plan was put people out in the country and let them farm and make a living and raise their family and everybody be independent and free on their own, make their own decision. The reason the devil's got all the people living in big cities is so one day they have to completely depend on the government to take care of them and people do anything when that time comes. When the bread trucks don't run and the milk trucks don't run, people will be standing in line to do whatever they want to. Now, let's talk about CERN. What is CERN? The reason I bring this in is because CERN is a, uh, the most expensive machine ever over near Geneva, Switzerland. Geneva, Switzerland, not far from Brussels, Belgium. It is a $9 billion machine, 300 feet in the earth, in the ground. That is a Hadron Collider. And their purpose is, they say, is to find out how fast particles travel in atoms and bump them into each other and maybe recreate the Big Bang and figure out how we got here to start with. I just, I've, I've done a, some research on it. They have coded messages and secret symbols. And what, what it is basically is a cross between modern science and the occult and magic. It is the largest most expensive machine in the history of the world. They, have, um, they are trying to duplicate the Big Bang by finding out the blocks that make up Adam. They, th they figure if we can do that by microscopic black holes and worm tunnels, that they call them, they're trying to figure out nature so that they can manipulate it. Like we figured out electricity and we figured out how to work electricity, they're trying to do that with, with nature and figure out the forces of nature that are in the earth. You remember in the Bible, the Bible talks about creatures that came out of the earth, down in there somewhere, not, not just up on top of it, like me and you are living. They are trying to find the, quote, God particle. If, if you want my honest opinion, they're, try, they're trying to hook into the gates of hell and they don't even know it. They know there's supernatural forces. They know there's entities. The, the, the world knows that there's something beside just what's natural and they're trying to make contact with it. There's a connection between CERN and Saturn, the, the, the planet Saturn, and they use occult practices trying to establish a contract, contact with Saturn. You know them gases around Saturn, them circles? They're trying to say that they're entities around those things and we're trying to make contact with them and bring them to earth. It is a one world monetary system coming. There is the mark of the beast coming. When the, the chip that was introduced a few years ago, I'm gonna show you here in just a second. Uh, it, is a, um, it is a system whereby you cannot buy or sell without being in the system. Now think about how used to, used to that concept we already are. I, I go to the dollar store and I go see, and I see, I see these, um, these signs um, and these signs uh, say that SNAP program or their food stamp program and people who are, are get that kind of benefit and that's, that's fine that, that, that people that need help should get help and I'm not against that. Uh, what they're, what they're saying is you have to be in the system or you don't get nothing. And our minds are being conditioned little by little to depend on that saying, hey, you have to be a part of the system or you don't get nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are headed to that day. I wanna show you a little bit. Go ahead, Jim. And I wanna show you just a couple of things here this morning that might be uh, clarify 
this just a little bit more. Go ahead and get the rest of them, all of them, please. Amen. The, the choir lights ain't can, all the way off. Now, um, that, that was several months ago. It's not this past week. But look at this. They opened up a tunnel in Switzerland not long ago. The Gothard Tunnel. It is the longest tunnel in the world, 35 miles long. It is 1.4 miles deep. What is a train going underground a mile? 35 miles. The weird thing about this is this is near CERN and the weird thing is the ceremony that was used to initiate this opening of this tunnel. Weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Wouldn't you think that if all the leaders come from France and Italy and everywhere to dedicate a tunnel, they'd all sit down and say, we're proud of this great accomplishment. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Something else is going on. Watch this. 1.4 miles under the ground. Longest one in the world. Here's how they initiated this tunnel. Leaders from Germany, France, and Italy attended. The show included a bunch of people in their underwear I couldn't show you, and the lamb as a sacrifice. And it shows that the multitudes are being controlled by supernatural force, mind control, the demonic creatures. This is at a tunnel dedication, people. Demons rolling around. A baffinet, that's the goat head, a symbol of Satan. What's that doing? What are they doing? This is the dedication of a tunnel? There's more going on than just a tunnel and a train. The gates of hell are being approached in our generation. The normal people are pictured here as beheaded on the guillotine, just like the Bible said will happen to people that refuse the mark. Blood flowing from a severed head with weird people floating around in the air. See the people cheering as that woman rides the beast? Revelation chapter 17. Will look like the crimson flowing below her. How weird is that, people? Do they know something we're not telling us? Look at the people cheering, coming out of the pit, the abyss. As they celebrate the opening of this tunnel, this thought, what's that supposed to be, angels? I never read in the Bible where any angels looked or acted like that. No angels. Now look at the big screen here. See how it looks like an eye? You remember all the one eye studies we've done and all the, 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 eye, the left eye, the Antichrist is dark and the one eye on the pyramid and all the, all the kids doing that, you know, with their hand in the pyramid sign, it's all fitting together. Look here. Controlled by Satan. There he is. I can't imagine the leaders of science of, of Italy and Germany and France sitting around saying, this is the way we dedicate our new temple. And it's almost like the face of Jesus has been obscured by the face of the devil. Watch it. His bride is left. I'm not joking. This is really happening. Isn't that crazy? We are definitely preparing for the Antichrist to take over. Look at all the eyes popping around there. That's under the tunnel there where they went. Now let's look at this right here. While the, while the elite is preparing for a one world government over there, 
Look what's going on here in America. This happens all the time. All the time. It was a gruesome crime. 15-year-old Elise Paler was lured into a grove of eucalyptus trees by three teenage boys in 1995. Look at that. They bound her neck with a belt, stabbed her repeatedly. And then listen to this, friend. Her. her body might never have been found if one of them, Royce Casey, hadn't come forward. He said she was a blonde-haired, blue-eyed virgin, and they were offering her as a sacrifice to the devil. The boys were part of a death metal band and thought that Satan could make their music better. Now see, that's what's going on in America. And all these little mega death wannabes are thinking, hey, if I sacrifice to Satan, he'll make me rich. I'll be popular. My songs will be heard. But they, are, they fall into that category of deceived and being deceived. And while they're up there on the stage deceiving the millions and taking their money, the devil's deceiving them. The devil's deceiving them, people. Listen to this song right here. This is one out of 50 I could show you. Casey said it was an idea they'd gotten from Altar of Sacrifice, a song by the heavy metal band Slayer. Slayer, high priest awaiting the dagger in his hand, spilling the pure virgin blood. Satan's slaughter, on his death, answer his every command. His parents filed suit against people we have met. Must Ain't that something? That he opened the door to demonic forces, which had a profound impact on his life. Was your abuse of alcohol related to the satanic influences that you'd been dabbling in? I, I say this. Um, Every time I drank, I did not always do activities that were satanic, but any time I ha had been doing anything that was satanic, I had been drinking. So what he's saying is, we got into Satanism for power. The band Slayer, he didn't play for them, they, there's another group. And I used to preach about these, other, and I'm the only person I've heard say this, but I had it on an album many, many years ago, Slayer stands for Satan laughs as you eternally rot. It's wrote on the album. And I'm going to tell you something, people. While they are deceiving, they are in fact being deceived. Why are you still out here? This is Bob Dylan. Many of you older folks remember Bob Dylan, one of the most popular rock song writers of all time. And the interviewer asked him, why are you still out here doing this? Man, you're 70, 75 years old. You don't have to be out here on tour. Why are you doing it? Listen to what he said. This is very enlightening. Oh, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, with? He said, can I ask you who you made that bargain with? Listen to his answer. With, with, with you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in the world we can't see. He said, I make a bargain with the chief commander. In this world and in that other world that we can't see. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a God in heaven. There is a devil loose on this world. There's a battle going on for your soul. There's raging after your boys and girls. The devil would take every one of these kids up here and pervert their minds and body and take them to hell if he can do it. God helped the church to rise up and be an army for God. We don't have time to play church. We don't have time to be entertained. I'm gonna show you the hip church in January, the cool churches where everything's cool. Where you can go have a beer with your pastor like Justin Bieber does. I'll show you them in January. We don't have time for that. Listen to this. Try to sit down and write something like that. Uh, the, there's a magic to that, and it's not... Uh, he thought it was magic. What was it? Magic. You know, it's a, it's a different kind of a penetrating magic. It's demonic. Yeah. You know, I, did it. I, I, I did it at one time. I'm doing really well now. So say this is Katy Perry. Y'all know who she is. And she grew up both her parents were preachers, supposedly, and uh, she grew up and had to recite Bible verses and stuff, and this girl here with the, with the upside-down cross earring is interviewing her, and listen to what she says. I 
almost 10 years ago. Um, yeah, I mean, I released a gospel record when I was 15 um, because I grew up in uh, you know, a household where all I ever did was listen to gospel music, and my parents are both traveling ministers, and so I kind of sang about listen to this. what was going on in my life at 15, and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Hear that? Can I hear it again? And so I sold my soul to the devil. You say, oh, they're kidding. See, they think they're kidding. But they're deceived and being deceived. They really did sell it. They really did sell it. Listen to Kanye West say the same thing about selling his soul. <laughs> I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Hear him scream? I know it was a crappy deal. I got a happy meal. Here it is again. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. This it came with a few toys like a happy meal. I can fool, I performed. This is Beyonce. And she says, she says, I'm a shy person. She said, I'm ashamed to even sing in front of anybody. I'm so shy. But she has an alter ego named Sasha that comes and gets in her right before she performs and gives her super energy and power. Listen to her say it. She said, I'm a, I couldn't get up and dance and act like I do in front of a crowd. I'm too embarrassed. But Sasha comes and Sasha does it. I raised my hands up and it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me. Oh my goodness. Listen. And it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me. Ain't that something? So you say, wow, people go crazy over it. They worship them people. They have a power that is not their own. Even so, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It's already happened. Nicki Minaj says the same thing about her demon called Roman. She said, I want him to leave, but he can't. He's here for a reason. I, I, I ask him to leave, but he can't. He's here for a reason. People have brought him out. People conjured him up, now he won't leave. People conjured him up, now he won't leave. That's why I tell you kids all the time, you better not fool with that kind of stuff. I don't care how good it feels. I don't care how cool you think it might be. Watch this this morning. See that? Look at that. Look at that. You blindly sell your soul. Hypnotized in their control. I like to have fun. This is that poor little old dumb girl that is on Jersey Shore. And she said the same thing. She said, I'm shy. There's no way I can get in front of people. <laughs> but I got possessed. I sold my soul. Like, I was scared to even like go to the doctors. So, anywho. Listen um, to this. She got her heart broke by a boy and then went and sold her soul. I was into my studies, getting good grades. And you know what screwed it all up was this one guy. He broke That's what always messes up, girls. You girls listening? That's what always messes you up. That's what always messes you up, girls. Some dumb boy. I was like, cool, thanks. I was like, now I have to do something pretty ridiculous and insane with my life. So why not sell my soul and go on Jersey Shore? So you got on Jersey Shore and got famous. That's how it happened. Now, let's see what the devil's getting ready to do and is already starting in our country. Make a globe, one world government. Everybody get together, erase all the differences, and now we see the microchip. Look at this. What is it? See it in the right hand? Remember what I read to you a while ago? In the right hand, wrote 2,000 years ago. Isn't that kind of weird? Yeah. 
Dark right eye. See the scanner over the forehead? Mindless can one day be implanted under the skin of every single American. Ain't that something? Bring it over here. You had to use a card to be able to purchase it. But what if there was a way that you wouldn't have to do any of that, where you could be microchipped, and that would basically work for the entire building? I'll tell you what it'd be. Everybody go crazy over it. You go to the beach. You don't have to take your purse. You go to a restaurant, you put your hand out, that chip has all your information, it knows about your health problems. If you're in a car wreck and nobody don't know, uh, 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 you know who you are, it tells if you're allergic to anything, what your medications are on, all your ID is contained in that chip. You say, Brother Danny, are you saying that? I'm not saying that's a mark of the beast. I'm not. I, I don't know if that's a mark of the beast. I'm not saying it is. I don't even believe it is right now. But I'll tell you one thing, buddy. It sure is getting us close to it. It sure is. What is the odds of that happening 2,000 years later after the Bible said that would happen? Man, if you don't believe the Bible, you're taking a risk no gambler in Las Vegas would take. The odds are against you, friend. You better run to God. You better get right with God this morning. You know what I read, I heard uh, the, the founder of one of the guys who invented the microchip and he was giving a speech. He, one of them got saved going around the church and giving a testimony and he said when they were all meeting, they were trying to figure out where the best place to put it was and he said, uh, well, they, one of them mentioned this, one of them mentioned in the neck and the clavicle areas of the skin and different places and stuff like that and they said uh, these things have to have batteries in them that, that recharge by heat or by movement or something and he said, They'd done a study. They thought, well, where would be the best, warmest temperature of the body uh, so it would keep it recharged? And you know what they come up with? The back of your hand or the forehead. They could have asked any mother that. Where does mama check for a fever? Ain't that weird? Ain't that weird? Ladies and gentlemen, what you are seeing in our generation is prophecy being fulfilled. Being fulfilled every single day of mine and your life. Well, it might be possible soon. Well, dozens of people are doing it voluntarily. Next week, Three Square Market in Wisconsin will be the first company in the U.S. to give microchips to its workers. They are one of those businesses. It's coming quick. That was a year ago. To ours into business places. They the Wisconsin company got the idea from a company in Sweden that started voluntarily. Got it from the idea of a company in Sweden. Where all this other stuff I've been talking about. From. There's something rotten in Denmark, man. They're going to find out, get a hold of the abyss over there in Switzerland, Belgium, somewhere. Putting chips in its workers recently. It claims that... Watch this. Here we go. In the I think near it's future. a great idea, and I think it would make it all a lot easier. I just think... You hear that? There you go, you're this guy just got his chip, and they got him a T-shirt. Said, you've been chipped. Now you're a part of the elite club. Remember now. Indeed. Part of the club. Just like that, I was part of a small group of people on Earth pushing the boundaries of what it means to be human. And within me, Germany, Twilight Zone. Now Politicians now want to get chipped. Global positioning device hidden in their wristwatch or backpack. And just around the next high-tech corner, an electronic chip like this that can be implanted under your kid's skin. Let's say your boss offered you an easier way to log onto your computer in the morning or bypass having to get change for the vending machine or even get through a secure door uh, by having a microchip planted in your hand. Anyone? Yeah. Maybe the See how the devil's brainwashing yeah, silly women led away with divers lust sitting at home watching TV? See how he's preparing us? You say, well, Brother Danny, that's some other... No, I ain't saying that's more of the base. I'm not saying. I'm looking for the Lord to come. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that's a step in that direction and the world will soon be ready for it. You say, well, no, people, a lot of people resist it. They will at first. They will at first. But all that has to happen is an emergency. And they'll say, from now on, you've got to have it. Volunteer at first. Then after that, it's mandatory. It's like it's right from a sci-fi movie, but people all over the world are implanting these into their wrists. See how the women sit at home watch nuts like that right there? 
that's so nice and everybody loves him and trusts him. He sticks that right hand out there and he said, people all over the world are putting this in the wrist. Can't you see the brainwashing taking place? While, you're, while, while we're fussing and fighting and arguing and laying out of church and not serving God and not getting right, the devil's getting ready to take this world over. So ask my producer, Dean, to find out more about this cutting-edge technology. How we date, stay safe, even how we travel. Paul? Cool. We're so attracted to our devices that they're basically becoming a part of our bodies. But what if they really could become a part of our bodies? Well, guess what? They can. Meet the RFID microchip. Ain't that something? This is a call for an uprising. Watch that today, ladies and gentlemen. He said, what if they could be? Well, guess what? They are. And that's Daniel chapter uh, 9, 7, 8, 9, where that image had a mixture of clay and iron in the toes. The last kingdom at the end of the world will be a mixture of clay and iron. We're clay. And you mix a machine inside of a person or put something in their brain, you got machines working in you is a mixture of iron and clay. And that's what happened in Noah's day. The sons of God mixed with the daughters of men. And people were walking around that wasn't completely human. Now here's this, to me, is one of the most heartbreaking, scariest things I've ever seen. And I'll show this and I'm done. This is a TV commercial. And to watch this commercial, if you didn't know the Bible, you would think this little RFID chip is the most wonderful thing ever invented and it's certainly going to solve all of our problems. Watch this commercial. And if you, now imagine you don't believe the Bible right now and you don't know it, what would you think? Watch it. Something so small can connect you to everything that matters. When your life and all you love are on the line. HealthLink is always with you when every second counts in the emergency room. Say I can save your life. Access to your medical records. Because Rob has trouble remembering all his medications. The answer to all our problems. Because I'm in love with my kids' kids. Because my car lost control while driving. No more problems now. Because now, I'm looking out for both of us. Because I have diabetes, but it doesn't have me. Because I spend my life in the ER, trying to save yours. <laughs> and that gives me the heebie-jeebies. How smooth, how slick. How right, how great this is. And see, we have the Holy Spirit living in us. We know the Bible. And you can imagine the 95% of the people in the world that don't even know about stuff like that. I'm going to read you something. Jimmy, if you will, just get me just the uh, far right lights on the far, 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 far right, all the ways you can go, far as you can go. Just a little bit there. Thank you, that's good. This is a 10th grade assignment for a 10th grader. Here it is, quote, suppose you work for a human microchip company. This was given to a high school kid not long ago. The government gives you the opportunity to make a televised speech to the nation. What would you say to persuade people to get chipped? Now, what did that say? The, gov the guy said, now, if the government lets you be on TV, teenager, you're only in the ninth and 10th and 11th grade, and you got the whole world you can talk to, the whole nation, to get a microchip, how would you get people to do it? Teaching them to persuade other people to get chipped. That's where we're headed. What will you do this morning? Are you ready to meet the Lord? If he came today, would you be ready? You are living in the last hours of the last days, people. If you're not right with God here this morning, you've been out partying, you've been out living wicked, you're taking a chance 
that you'll regret one day if you don't get your heart right with God. We are at the door. This isn't really much of a Christmas message, but the biggest gift, the best thing could possibly happen for every child of God would be for Jesus to come before Tuesday and get us out of this old world. And it's gonna happen one day. Let's stand. Brother Jason, y'all come. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one lie, please, that's fine. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Nobody's moving. I don't want nobody talking. I want you to just stay right where you're at this morning. Be real still. And I want you to ask yourself a question. Y'all come on, Crystal. I want you to ask yourself this question. If I died right now, would I go to heaven? If Jesus came right now, right this minute, would I go or would I be left behind? Every head bowed, every eye closed. In just a moment, I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna ask them to sing and I'm gonna ask you to get out of your seat and make your way down here to this altar and get your heart right with God. If you're here this morning, you're not ready to meet the Lord, that you'll come. Make things right while you still got this opportunity. Our Heavenly Father, I beg you right now in Jesus' name that you may speak to every single heart here this morning, every mama, every daddy, every boy, every girl, every teenager. Lord, I've done my best. It ain't much, but I've done my best to show these people how close we are to the end. I pray the Holy Ghost will do His work that I can't do. I ask in the name of Jesus that you do a miracle right here in somebody's life and heart. And whatever you do, we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we ask it and for His sake. Amen. Y'all say it. Come on, come on, let's pray. Christian people, Christian people, let's get in here and pray for our family, for our loved ones. Let's honor God and do what God would have us to do. Come on, right now. Meet me here at this altar. Let's do what God wants us to do. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, right now. Come on, right now. Come on, right now. You need to come. Come on. Come on, right now. Come on, teenagers. You know what you need to do. Help me. Help, Help, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Amen. My shoulders are You let the Lord help you this morning. Amen. I need help, Lord. I need help. I need help, Lord. Let's sing it now. You need to come. Come on right now. Make it right before Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. He really cares. Amen. Come on. Oh my God this morning. Amen. He Oh, Lord. He's waiting Amen. for your God call. Bless you, Mr. He God bless you. can help Amen. you. Help, help me. Just say, help, Lord, help me. Ask him to help you this morning. Come on, right now. Come on, right now. You ask him to help you. My shoulders are weak. Glory to God. And I'm hurting so. Amen. I need help. I need help from a touch of your love. Amen. Oh, hear my plea. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. If you let God help you this morning, he cleans softly.
Some still coming this morning. Have you let God help you this morning? You're going to take a risk. You're going to take a gamble. There's one thing I found out about gambling, and I ain't never done it. I, you know, we used to play around when I was a kid. But I, ain't, I'm, I ain't dumb enough to do it now. One thing you'll find out about gambling, you do it long enough, you're going to lose. They don't build them big casinos off people winning. They let one win 10 million losers. You gamble, you'll lose. You gamble with your soul, you're going to lose it. You fool around, fool around, and fool around, wait another week, wait another week, wait another week, and then you're going to die one day, and you're not going to be ready. I want to sing one more verse while these are praying. One more. If God's speaking to your heart, why don't you get out of that seat? Come down here and let us pray with you. Make things right. You say, why do you have to do it in front of people? You don't. But everybody in the Bible that Jesus called, he called them publicly. You, you, just, you want to get saved worse than anything in this world. That's when God will do a miracle in your heart. Y'all go ahead. One more verse. There's a voice calling will you come this morning? Come on. Just get out of your seat. Amen. Hey, Just get out of your seat this morning. Honor God. Hey, man. And it whispers, hey, Hallelujah. draw closer hey, man. to me. Hallelujah. Leave this world far behind. Oh, Lord, yes. There are new heights to climb and a new place with me you can find are you willing this morning are you willing so whatever whatever it takes, whatever it takes Lord to draw, draw near you. closer to you that's what I'm willing Amen. to do. You come oh, this morning. Whatever it takes. Hallelujah. To be more like you. Amen. That's, That's what. what I'm willing to do. Amen. All right, Jimmy, give me some more light there. All right. That's good. Amen. It's a little bit out in the house here. You don't want to blind everybody all at once. You've seen today just a tiny little bit of how fast the world's moving. Right past what me and you believe, 90 miles an hour. So this morning, I want you to make up your mind. This Christmas, if I'm not saved, I'm going to get saved. If I am saved, I'm going to get completely right with God. Listen, people, this, this thing flying apart at the seams. Everywhere you go, you, you visit on Saturday, every house you go to, it's trouble, 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 drugs, 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 divorce, fighting, jail, drugs. I mean, everywhere, everywhere. It's bad days. But I'm so thankful this morning. There's a God, there's a positive outlook, and that's the uplook. And that's the way we're going to leave here one of these days. If you're glad you're saved, say amen. amen. All right, be real still now. I don't want nobody to get hurt. We've got a lot of kids going to be running around that parking lot. Do not move your vehicle till you're sure. There's no irony because there's hundred. I don't know how many we wound up with. Uh, uh, good night, hundred and, I don't know, way over 100 kids here this morning. Maybe close to 200, I don't know. But um, uh, they're going to be getting their gifts We'll be getting them on the bus. One, everybody, somebody on the bus, each bus is going to get a brand new bicycle. Um, and we're happy to be able to do that. And then they got some other gifts. They got cookies and all kind of stuff. But we want everybody to have just the best Christmas ever. Enjoy the Lord. Do something for somebody else. And the Lord will bless you for it. Be here for church Wednesday night. Here's the sign up sheet for the winter camp. If you're not signed up for winter camp, right here's the sheet. They're leaving. Tuesday, uh, Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, the bus leaves, okay? All right. All minds and hearts clear. Thank God for what he's done here this morning. Uh, Brother Mike, how about you dismiss us? Everybody, fellowship, be friendly, be slow, and take your time getting out of here. Go ahead, brother.